Oh, wrong way. Hold on. All right, there we go. The camp, and if you haven't signed up, it's not. Well, we're just starting. We're gonna build some more memories. Amen. All right. Who wants to light this thing? Charles, you got to try it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Just the way you like that cigar. <laughs> Turn around, Charlie. Turn around. Turn around so you can get Turn around, Charlie. There we go. You're going good. <laughs> Set it on the wood. Oh, me. All right, just stand here, guys. Just stand here. Now, uh, stand up with us, please. Just, just stand where you are. All of you just stand right there. I want you to stand right where you're at. Deacon, just stay up here. Wayne, come and lead us. And then we got something else to do, and we're going to go eat. Just a chorus to victory in Jesus. Oh, victory. Wonderful man. Well, that's where the church come from. Many of you have come in, made great sacrifices to see this day. I, I tell you, God is here. God is here. When I first met Dr. Boofer, he made one of the greatest impacts on me of any preacher that I've ever met. I'll never forget when the spokesman I believe that was Brother Ron, wasn't it, Ron? Says, what kind of salary are you going to take? <laughs> Doc Boofer says, I work for God. I don't take a salary. You know what it takes in this area to support a family the size of mine. If I take a salary, I'm a hireling. I'm not a hireling. I don't run when the wolf comes. I work for God. He'll take care of me. Doc, I love you. The wolf has been around, but you never ran. <laughs> That's right. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we do thank you for... 
I want to say to you that uh, you are a light in a dark place. Yeah. And this world is a dark place. Yeah. And uh, where I pastor is a dark place. Ask any pastor here, they will say that where I pastor is a dark place. It has never been easy to preach the gospel, and it never will be easy to preach the gospel. That's right. But we are commanded to preach the word, to be in season, out of season, right. wherever we are. And I'm glad to say that John Morgan is one of my favorite people and one of my dear friends, and I'm glad that he's here. Our church has supported Brother John for almost 20 years, and will continue to do so. And uh, we pray for you. Our people are concerned about you. As a matter of fact, one of our men the other evening said, why don't we take a group of our men and go up to Brother John's place and help him? One, two, three. When I say three, I'm going to take it, okay? One, two, three. Understand, but it is a much deeper word. These days of convenience, of the, in this day of doing our own thing, the word conformable unto his death simply means, means to receive the same as. Now think about that for a moment. Paul said, I am willing, if the Lord will allow me to have this power and to experience this power, I am willing to receive the same kind of suffering that Jesus had. If He will allow me, if He will give me the strength, I will not turn away from pressure, heartache, suffering, criticism, being misunderstood, whatever it is, I'm willing to accept it to receive the power of the resurrection. That's deep. I wonder how many of us would be willing to go there. Most of us will not go there because we're satisfied with where we are. Satisfied with one hour on Sunday morning, Satisfied to say, oh, I'm a Christian, but I'm not a fanatic. I'm not going to make a fool of myself. I want to be politically correct. Paul said, I'm not satisfied with that. Whatever it takes to experience the power of His resurrection, I'm willing to accept it, and I want to be able to receive the same kind of suffering He did if it means having that power. That's why he turned the world upside down. And one of the religious stations had a program on, I think, for the last two nights entitled, The Man Who Turned the World Upside Down, referring to the Apostle Paul, and he literally did. And someone said wherever he went there's either a revival or a riot. And the reason for that is, is because he was willing to suffer. I have a book in my office on the life of the Apostle Paul, and the title is Christ's Supreme trophy. And I certainly would agree with that in many ways. Now in verse 10 Paul makes a request that I might know him. Sometimes we make requests and we've not really thought that request through. We'll make requests of one another. 